morning, good morning. Pioneer Community Church here, our 10 o'clock service. Thank you for you out there in the, in the house this morning. We're glad you're here. Praise the Lord. You out there in social media land, hello, how you doing? Pine Hills Community Church, 10 o'clock service, and we're glad that you're here. And we would love for you to hit your share or like button. We would like for others to be able to experience in our worship here this morning. We pray, no, we know there will be something said. God's going to say something. If you come looking for God and seeking Him, there's going to be something He's going to have here for you, and it's specifically for you. Amen? Amen. So we're glad that you're here this morning. And before we go any farther, I'm just thinking about something right now. I look at the life of Joseph back in the New Testament, Old Testament in Genesis. We see that Joseph is not liked by his brothers. We see that he's, he's, he's thrown into a prison. He's lied on. He's forgotten. But in the end, in the end, Joseph says something. He tells his brothers this. You meant this for evil. But my God, my sovereign God, my God and his providence meant it for good. Now, we don't always understand that. we got to keep one thing in mind. God is always working behind the scenes. We may not understand it. We may not like it. No, we don't. At times, we don't like the way he deals with us. But the word of God says, he does what? All things well. And if that be true, I got to trust in him by faith. Trust in him by faith. And I want to prolong this too much more. But, but, look at Joseph and look at our lives. You know, we might not have been lied on the way Joseph was lied on when, when, when Potiphar's wife accused him. But guess what? It may be somebody accusing us of something. We may not have had brothers that wanted to throw us into the dungeon, into the pit, the way Joseph brothers did. But there's always somebody who has a thing against us and for us. We may not be forgotten the way Joseph was forgotten in prison, but there's going to always be, some, always be somebody who's going to what? Forget us. And what I'm trying to say is this. The same God, with the same grace and mercy, with Joseph, is still with us today when we go through our stuff. When last week was last week, guess what? God showed up. When last week wasn't the kind of life we wanted, guess what? God in his mercy and his grace showed up. And he says, guess what? The same way that Joseph said, I'm going to lift the Lord up. He didn't really just say those words, but what he did was, in his way of talking, say, I give it all, all, all in praise and glory to God. And that's what he wants us to do today. Give it all in praise. If it's nothing more than his mercy and grace saving us, that's enough to want to praise him. That's enough right there. How dare we sit around and act like we, no, 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 no. This is God thing. And if he does nothing else for us, he says, Lord, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. And because of that, Lord, I'm going to praise you, Lord. I may mess up sometimes, but I'm going to come there, and I know you're going to you're going to deal with me, God. You're going to forgive me, but I'm still going to praise you, Lord. I'm still going to praise you. And we thank you right now, Lord. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all you're going to do. And it's in your name we pray, and we say amen and amen. And now PACC's Voices of Praise will lead us into our praise of that God who gave us the grace and the mercy to what? Be here today. Amen. Amen. the day that the Lord has made we shall rejoice and be glad in it I said this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it is there anybody glad that God brought you through the week is there anybody glad that God let you live the sea till Sunday through many dangers through many calls through many snares the Lord brought us here today and for that we give him glory for that we give him honor and for that we give him praise so we've come to praise him and that's exactly what we're gonna do y'all got the temperature right that's what you do put your hands on it with me will you yeah. I love to praise him
other galaxies, if you will, you will not find not one person, not one entity that's able to compare to our God. There's none strong enough. There's none wise enough. And this is why we bless him. And we have an understanding that he is more than enough. This flesh makes us search for external things to please us. We try to find joy in our job, yeah, and in the things that we do in our family. But none of those things can replace the relationship and the love that you have with your father. And so we just want to take this time to just express to God that even when we get tied up in life, we still appreciate him. And we say, Father, you are enough. Jaira, you are enough. We will be content in every circumstance that Jaira, you, you are more than, more than enough. If you agree, would you put your hands together right there? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. and holding you up so there's nothing I can do to let you down it doesn't take a trophy to make you
already chosen. I know who I am. I know what you spoke. I'm already loved more than I could imagine. And that is enough. That is enough. I'll say it again. I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. He chose you by name. I know who I am. I know what he spoke. than I could imagine. That is, that is enough. 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 I say it one more time. I'm already loved. Already chosen, you're already chosen. Do you know who you are? You're the loved of Christ, you're the loved of Christ, you are the apple of his eye. You were chosen, you were chosen, you were chosen, you were chosen. It doesn't matter what you've done, what you've been through, what you're going through, who they say that you are, it doesn't matter what they say, but who does God call you? He called you. From the very foundation of the earth, before the world began, he did everything that he did with us in mind. That means that you are chosen. You are called for this. And this is why we give him glory. Because no matter what we go through, it doesn't define who we are. No matter what the world called us, and we might have responded to it. Because we are in Christ, we are new creatures. Behold, all things that were old, we put that away. And now all things are new. And for that can you just lift up a praise to God to say, I know. I know who I am. I'm already chosen. I know who. I know who I am. I'm already chosen. I know who I am. I know that I'm chosen. I know who I am. I know who I am. I'm already chosen. place to give God praise. We understand that he's enough. He's more than enough. And for that, we love you. And for that, we give you glory. And for that, we give you honor. And for that, we lift up your name. We make you great in this place. We exalt you, oh God. There's nobody like you in all of the earth. There's nobody that loves like you in all of the earth. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah.
God today. I want to say good morning to everybody. Good morning to those who are watching us online. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you so much to praise team and the band. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Is anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. some announcements out the way and while I'm getting getting the announcements I want to say thank you so much to um, y'all give it up for Miss Veronica for helping us this morning our prayer our prayer and her prayer we've been talking and Veronica is looking at possibly coming to connect with us to help us out with our praise team amen Somebody ought to be more excited than that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We recognize that our church is still in transition. Those who are watching, our church is still in transition. And um, as I stated to our, our leaders, we're in transition for the better. Yeah, we're in transition for the better. And so my prayer is always, God, send what we need to help us um, bless God even the more. We want to have excellence in the house. Amen? Amen. And so I want to say thank you to Sister Christian who's always open. Me and her always talking as to how can we better our music department. So we talk at least once a week just to look at what we're doing, who we're pulling on, how we're going to do certain things. Um, or whatnot. So we're all on the same page as what we're trying to do um, because we want to keep Pine Hills Community Church going. Amen? Amen. There may be some shifts going on, but we want to have the same spirit in this house. We want to magnify God. We want to make sure that God is getting the glory in this house. And sometimes you got to be ready to shift. Somebody say, get ready. Be ready to shift. Don't, don't, don't. I know uh, my bishop told me, he said, listen, there's going to come a time when I'm going to be done pastoring because I'm not going to be doing this for the rest of my days. But at the same time, while I'm doing this, I'm asking God, when is my time? Who should I be passing the baton off to? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Get, getting somebody else in the position to carry on what has been built here. And I thank God for what our founder has done with Pine Hills Community Church, him being bold enough to step out on faith to start this church. Amen? Amen. I said amen. Amen. So we honor him. And not only honor our founder, but we honor his wife. So many times we overlook the lady that stands behind the man. And so uh, we honor his wife as well for taking on such a task and those other pastors who have come and members who have come to help build up this church amen amen so we want to continue um, what God is doing in this house I got a qu uh, um, um, an announcement for the wings of faith uh, wings of faith uh, Miss Betty uh, wants to remind you that um, on Thursday the 18th at 11 o'clock, we will meet at Red Lobster on West Colonial. On Thursday the 18th at 11 o'clock, we will meet at the Red Lobster on West Colonial. That is for our seniors. That is for our seniors. Anybody that's 55 and older, raise your hand. 55 and older, don't be shamed. 55 and older. 55 and over. Amen. 
Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all need to look. Now, you, you still look good for your age. What y'all, why y'all doing this? Shoot. You should be saying, Pastor, I still got it now. Don't, don't let it fool you. So, uh, man, join the Wings of Faith. Join Miss Betty. Um, one of our goals is to make sure that we do, I'm pushing this intergenerational church where we have all age groups in our church. And we're trying to serve every age group, every male, every female. We want to make sure that we are ready to be at um, your service. So we want to help you to fellowship. Let's get connected. Let's get to know each other. I found it better. It's better to serve with you knowing somebody. It's always good to serve with the people, some people that you know. So I want to say get connected if you're 55 and older. Get connected with the Wings of Faith. Miss Betty, along with her team, got some great things in store. I told her she should have changed the date. At least if we could have went after church on Sunday because I wanted to go and get me some cheese biscuits. But she, but Miss Betty told me, that's your business, Pastor. We going when we going. It's, we going when we going. And so, um, yeah, so, so you have to catch us on another round, okay? All right, Miss Betty, I'll catch you on another round then, okay? And so it's all good. We want you to go and enjoy yourself with our seniors. I promise you will enjoy it. Um, also, this Saturday, this Saturday, I'm asking all of our volunteers in ministry, all of our uh, trustees, all of our um, leaders, we are coming together in the gap room, and we're going to have a time of prayer yeah, we're going to come together, have a time of prayer. Not only are we going to have a time of prayer, but we're going to have a time of impartation. So I asked uh, uh, one of our leaders in the community, one of our spiritual leaders in the community, Bishop uh, Derek McCray from the Experience Christian Center. He's going to come and impart some words of wisdom um, to help us as it relates to uh, team, being a team. All right. Um, so I want you there. I want you there. Please mark your calendars for this. We're gonna have a good breakfast. We got some, um, we got some muffins. We got some juice. We got some apple juice. We got some, some grits. We got some eggs. We got some bacon. We got some salt. Oh yeah, we going in. Oh, we going in. And so um, I want to say thank you once again for Dr. Fleet and the Sisterhood. Thank you for the ministry of the Sisterhood that is doing this for us, that we can have a time of prayer. Because prayer is important. Man, you can't be saved and not have a prayer life. You got to have a prayer life. You always want to be in tuned into what God is doing. And church, we need it. We definitely need it. I think that's pretty much it, unless I'm missing anything else. Um, but for right now, that's where we are. All right, we got to get in this word. I'm trying to do better with my time. So I got to get, I got to get out of here. I'm going to be done. I, Tristan, I know you told me don't say that, but I'm going to do it. We're going to get this. We're going to get this. If you can stand to your feet for the reading of the word, let's go. Let's go. If you can, go ahead real quick and turn to Romans. Go to Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Can y'all hear me well out there? All right. Those of you at home, I hope you got your Bibles. As a matter of fact, if you can real quick, before we get in this word, I need your help to um, evangelize. And if you're on Facebook, go ahead and share. I'm going to do this as well. Go ahead and share. Let's get the gospel out. Let's get it out. Um, so go ahead and do me a favor. Let's share what we got going on today. Amen. Amen. The Bible declares in Romans chapter uh, 8, verse 9, it says, You who, out, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, 
but but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. I want to speak from the subject title, and we're going to get to this. Just be patient with me. Remain broken. Remain broken. You may have your seats. God, have your way in this place. Forgive me of my sins. God, I ask God that you speak to your people through me. I lean and depend on you today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of the things that our church is talking about right now is the outer man and the inner man. One of my goals is at our church is to make sure that as we are trying to go in God's strength is to be intentional about our church being where God is. Because if we're going to go in his strength, we got to trust and lean on him. We got to trust and we got to lean on him. We got to depend on him. One of the things that I do want our church to understand as we, rec as we talk about the inner man breaking through the outer man, the inner man meaning the Holy Spirit that is connected on the inside. Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you, breaking through the outer man. The outer man is your flesh. Okay? We want to make sure that the inner man is coming out of us so that Christ may be exalted. So that God may be magnified. Watch this. In all that we do. Somebody say all. Okay, now, the thing is, I have come to discover that it is hard sometime allowing my spirit to break through because I like what I like on the outside. Or I'm used to, watch this, entertaining the outside. As a matter of fact, before you got saved, that's all that you knew. You was making sure that the outside, the flesh, was taken care of. But once you got saved, God wanted to, watch this, awaken something on the inside so that you can see what he desires for your life. And that which is on the inside will break through. And watch this, you can be effective in the earth. Okay. One of the things that I've come to discover also is that once we get saved, sometimes we get saved and we forget that we still live in this world. And sometimes for the new believer, they try to live this life as a believer and they find it difficult to live this life as a believer because of, watch this, they've watched somebody and the way, they, the way that they live, watch this, that new believer in his own mind say, wait, I'm not there yet. And I think as believers, we should be able to tell new believers it's okay to not be there yet. Because we all was not there. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We had to mature. We had to grow. We've had to witness some things. We've had to live this life and experience some stuff. And it caused us to change our mind and our focus. Yeah. So it's important that you understand once you get saved, you got to know there's a difference from the inner man and the outer man. 
the inner man, once you get saved, God wants you to walk by faith and not by sight. He wants you to walk by something that is unseen. But in order for you to walk by faith and not by sight, you got to get intimate with him. You got to have a relationship with him. Now, if you have a relationship with him, just because you are in the world doesn't mean that you're now disconnected from God. Just because you might be around people who are not saved does not necessarily mean that you are disconnected from God. Why am I saying that? Because some of us in here are in different places and you saying, Pastor Miles, my all, all of my family are not saved. But I'm saved and I find it hard because the truth of the matter is, my family ain't going nowhere. So how do I live this life of being saved while at the same time staying with those or remaining in front of those who are worldly, who have a fleshly nature? I want to tell you, number one, you're not disconnected because you deal with people who live by the outer man. You're actually in a good place because you're having to learn and become disciplined how to allow your inner man to break through your outer man. You are in a learning place. You're in a, you're in a place where God is disciplining you. Some people who have the inner working of God have not become disciplined because they don't know how to separate their inner man from the outer man. Church, because you are spirit in a body, you will forever have to deal with the body as long as you are here on earth. You're spirit in a body. So you always going to have to deal with people. And here it is. People are going to be people. People are going to do what people do. But the purpose of God allowing his Holy Spirit to be on the inside of you is, watch this, recognizing that you are different. Somebody say, I'm different. You are peculiar. You are a chosen generation. You are of a royal priesthood, which means, watch this, on the inside of you is a treasure. Yeah, there's something special about you. And what God does is he places all of us who are special in the earth in hope that we share this treasure that's on the inside of us. Because you are spirit in a body, you will forever have to deal with the body as long as you are on earth. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 says, it tells us this, when a person dies, then shall um, the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return to God who gave it. In other words, when a person dies, his and her spirit goes back to God. But the body, somebody say the body. It returns to the dust. And the soul of that person no longer exists. Watch this. Watch this down here. It, God wants your spirit. He wants your soul. Soul like in the spirit. He wants your spirit. The, and the Holy Spirit, once you invite him in, is intertwined with your soul in order that, watch this, the way you function, the Holy Spirit comes on the inside of you and watch this, it get connected to you in, in order, watch this, that you function according to the Spirit. Function according to the Spirit of God. This new life that is in you, watch this, you are open to God sharing stuff with you that you didn't know. You have some of you have a spiritual, a spiritual discernment 
you can see things that you couldn't see before. Why? Because God has awakened something on the inside of you. He's awakened something on the inside of you. And what he did was he allowed his Holy Spirit to come on the inside of you and watch this, to illuminate what's before you, to let you see what's really in the world. I'm going somewhere, I promise you. What's really out here? Because watch this, you've been having fun. But you didn't know your fun was leading you to a place that you're not going to like. It's not always hell, church. Because it can be hell right in your house. But it's your decisions that got you there. And could it be it got you there because you wasn't aware of the spiritual things that God will have you to know. And the reason why you don't know it is because you're used to living according to your flesh. So God has to bring you back. He wants to get you to relearn some things because he'll show you that, man, all this stuff I was doing, I've been doing it wrong. And God, if you ever want a good steak or if you ever want some good food, Sometimes for those of us that when you eat your food, it's kind of bland. What do you add? Some salt. You are the salt of the earth. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He wants you to be effective. He wants you to be, um, he wants you to bring some change. What was is not now. Why? Because you have stepped into it. Come on, I need y'all to build up your confidence. No, you, you got God on your side. No, when I step in the room, something got to change. Why? Not because I'm trying to be known. It, it's because I now know that, watch this, God on the inside of me has literally placed me in a place where something got to be different. And here it is. Salt applied to anything will always bring a difference. This is important. This is very important. I'm kind of trying to be careful with this because I want to make sure everybody's following me. Um, as you continue to live in this world, your body is always going to be there, and the body is going to want what the body wants. But you have to understand that you have to separate your inner man and your outer man. I need you to write that down. I have to separate my inner man and my outer man. I have to separate my inner man and my outer man. Why do I have to separate my inner man and my outer man? Why do I have to separate the spirit from the flesh? Why? Because I want to be led by the spirit. Not my flesh. I want to be led, write that down too. I want to be led by the spirit and not my flesh. Watch this. In all that I do. I want to try to be led by the Spirit in all that I do. Well, Pastor Miles, I'm not there yet. You're right, you're not there. But start practicing. Great football teams, watch this, they work well, they'll be better if they practice. Those who have won the championship, you'll tell that they've been doing a great job. They've been doing some work. Watch this, and they'll tell you, it's because, man, we practice hard. I wasn't waiting till I got in the championship to work on my jump shot. I was doing this off from the TV. I was behind the scenes doing this. I practice at the house what I want outside the house. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Here it is. Here it is. Now, if that is the case, I'm separating my spirit man from the outer man. I want to give you something. The Bible says... Be angry, 
but sin not. Pastor Miles, why are you going here? Because being angry sometimes, as I did my research, especially in the church, is close to being sinful. Because sometimes we as the body of Christ don't know how to separate our spirit man from the outer man. And watch this. I need you to know this. It's okay to be angry, but don't sin. It's okay to be mad, but if you're mad and watch this, you go to your brother and when you go to them, you don't go to them in love, that's your flesh. You, if you go to them mad or, or you're bothered, you're angry on the inside, we should be able to go to our brothers and sisters and go to them in love. When you go to them in love, you're, watch this, you're going to them in a way that's, watch this, that's going to build them up, not tear them down. If I'm going to you in my flesh, I'm coming to you to tear you down. You're going to get all the business. Yeah, you're going to get all the business. You're going to get all the business. No, and you're going to get all the business, and I'm coming to hurt your feelings. I'm coming to break you down because, watch this, I want you to know I don't like you. I want you to know I don't like that. But as the body of Christ, we got to make sure, that's why you got to separate the spirit from the flesh because when you're going to handle um, issues in the ministry, when you're going to handle issues in your marriage, when you're going to handle issues on your job, you first got to say, God, don't let me go according to my flesh. Because what you taught me in church can't just be for church. What you taught me got to be, watch this, for the world as well. Because watch this, the, oh my God, the Holy Spirit is only inside of me, not just for church. The Holy Spirit is only inside of me because I am the salt of the earth. So I bring a difference. Brother, I'm not coming to you to tear you down. I'm coming to you to build you up. Sometimes when a person is, um, you see that they're angry, you got to come to them soft. Come to them gentle. Watch, what's not so much, I, my mama always says, not so much what you say. It's how, it's how you say it. Here it is. I need you to understand that your inner man has to break through your outer man. And when you're angry, got to let your spirit come out right then. Don't hinder the spirit. When you are, oh my God, that's why you got to remain broken. God wants you to remain where he can use you. He don't want you to build. He don't want you to, oh my God, where everything is always miserable. He wants to use you, but you got to remain broken. That once you learn that, watch this, I can still be in the world, but have the presence of God, stay there. Did y'all hear what I just said? I can still be in the world, but I still want to stay connected. Somebody say, I got to stay connected. Yeah, I got to stay connected. I got to stay connected. God's presence, God's connection is too valuable for you to be disconnected or let somebody get you disconnected. Because you can still be saved and flip the script and start going according to your flesh. Y'all ain't going to help me. Look at your neighbor and say, don't let it fool you. Because I can't take it there if you tried me. Y'all, y'all, okay. Don't, 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 don't let the smooth taste fool you. 
It's important for me to stay connected and in God's presence. It's important for me to follow the Spirit because it's, if it's left up to me, I might just I might just do something that I'll regret later. So the Lord told me to tell you, stay connected even when it's hard. And because church hard times will ever be presented to you, practice staying connected to God. Practice staying connected to God. Don't you lose your cool for a moment of people acting a fool. Don't don't you don't you lose don't you lose your cool. Because God is still holding you responsible for you being the carrier of what you got. People who are broken They've understood this. They, they got this down. One thing that I found out about onions, I really didn't like onions until I met my wife's dad. And, 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 and Mr. Fleeton, the way dad, when he makes his, the, the, the grill of hot dogs and the hamburgers, I always wash them because I can't cook. And um and, or grill. No, no, don't, no, 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 don't let the spirit move you now. Don't let the spirit go ahead now. You're about to make, bring me into my flesh. <laughs> uh, uh, watch this. Wait now. Wait now. Wait now. Uh, so that's a whole nother conversation. So, sorry, Facebook. Those who are watching us live. Listen. So I watch him, and what he does, Dr. Fleet, he'll take butter and some onions and some salt and pepper. Um, and I really couldn't do onions. Make you know, onions stink and make your breath stink. You put it on your hands. You start smelling like onions. And but it's some about when he put it on the grill and let it just. The, the, you know, the butter melt and, and all of it come together and you get your hot dog and your mustard and ketchup and you put all that on there. It does something. Mm. It does something. And so the thing is, he says, Miles, that's just how you, you got to understand that life is like that. It's like onions. If it's just by itself, it might not be all that good, but when you add a little seed, It make a world of difference. It makes a world of difference. That's why God gives you grace and he gives you mercy because he want to put some seasoning on your onions. I know every now and then I might be a little stank. I know I'm like every now and then I might, watch this, I'm a bit too much because you got to peel back layers. But I guarantee you if you just allow some seasoning on my onions, Look at, look at your neighbor and say, put some seasoning on your onions. What does that mean? Allow the spirit, watch this, allow the spirit to put something on you where you can be affected. So when y'all go back home today and your wife acting crazy, your husband acting crazy, you look at them and say, you need to put some seasoning on your onions. Y'all hear, hear what I'm saying? Put some seasoning, put some seasoning on your onions now. Hurry up and do it too. Now, I said that to say this, it's because, man, church, as I'm closing, God wants us to be effective. Deacon Hampton, I don't know how else to tell y'all. God wants our church to be effective. Watch this. I don't, I don't. Dick, Dick and Hammond, bring that table. And Reverend Christian, bring this suitcase. Bring this suitcase. Dick and Hammond, place that right over here if you can. Being saved. Somebody said this, man. You can be. Spirit, so spiritual minded to where you're no earthly good. Yeah. A true heavenly minded Christian is one who lives out his or her faith in service to the Savior and who wants to act justly. 
love mercy, and walk humbly with God. That's scripture, church. That's Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Let me read that again. A truly heavenly-minded Christian is one who lives out his or her faith in service to the Savior and who wants to act justly. One who loves mercy and one, watch this, who wants to walk humbly with God. It is the earthly-minded person who accomplishes nothing of it eternal value. People who are earthly minded are of the world and seek after its desires which are not from God. So when you only thinking from the flesh, you're not thinking for the benefit of that person's future. You can't just think about what's temporary. You got to think about what's eternal. So when I pray for my brother and sister, I'm not praying that God just handle you down here. I'm praying that your relationship with God will, watch this, will become so great that come what may, you're going to stay with God. Watch this. Though people hurt your feelings, you're going to stay with God. You're going to act justly. You are going to, watch this, you are going to love mercy. Mercy, mercy, it's, 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 oh man, grace and mercy, it's, it's compassion. It's being compassionate. God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Watch this, let me give them favor. Let me give them something they don't even deserve. This is something that God wants, watch this. And he's saying, I want you to walk humbly which means you got to bow down to him that means watch this you got to reverence him that means you got to say god i submit all of my way to you here it is here it is being earthly minded is short-sighted those who operate in the flesh don't see future. That's why they only want now. That's why you got to understand, if I'm going to get connected, y'all better hear me. If I'm going to get connected, I need somebody that can see me in my future. I need somebody that can see me. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, do you see me in my future? Do you see things getting better for my future? Watch this. Do you see me operating in a greater level of anointing in my future? importantly, do you see me operating in my salvation? The world and its desires passes away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. That's 1 John chapter 2 verse 17. I come to you and I close with this. Romans chapter 8 verse 5 through 9. It says this. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Watch this. Reverend Krishna, can you come here? Can you pick this up? And I need you to move this forward. Wait a minute. Can you carry this as well? I need you to do both of those. Is it difficult? You know why it's difficult? Because you, your energy is focused on the table. So by the time I tell you to carry something else, it's hard for you to do it because your, your sight and your energy is on the table. God is saying, the reason why some of my believers can't move in the things of me is because, watch this, you got other stuff in your hands. Your emotions, your past, who dirty dogged you, who left you. Watch this, watch this. The losses you got from business contracts, you can't get over it. And God is saying, now once you got saved, 
I got you in a new place where I need you to carry what I want you to carry. But you got to make a decision. Are you going to carry the disappointments of life? Are you going to carry what the world has for you? Or are you going to pick up what the Spirit has? Watch this. Watch this. God is not saying, I won't have you deal with what the world has. All he's saying is, there's coming a moment in your life, I'm going to need you to choose whether it's going to be flesh or are you going to choose the things of the Spirit. You got to separate them. You got to move in the Spirit. Sometimes moving in the spirit can be confusing because sometimes moving in the spirit, when you have to let stuff go, it means a lot to you. But that's what the cross is for because being saved ain't never been nice. When I say nice, let me, let me, let me, let me say that again. Being saved has not always been beautiful. Ask Jesus on the cross. It's a messy beautiful. He was beaten and bruised. Whipped all night long. But it was a beautiful thing because he was doing something for our future. He was doing something for our eternal home. Everybody stand to your feet. I'm done. I need you to know this church. Wherever God is taking this church, we're going to go in God's strength. If we reverence God and respect God, I challenge you today, separate things in your life and ask yourself, is this spirit or is this my flesh? Is God on this? Is God not on this? Relationships. If, if, is God in this? Is God not in this? Because if we're going to do this, we got to do this how God wants it. If we're going to minister to those who are lost, watch this. If we're going to minister to those who are lost, do we got the spirit of love? Or do we just got spirit of conformity where you just want people to be like you? Because they're not going to be like you. They're not going to dress like you. They're not going to talk like you. But the goal of having the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is that the Holy Spirit break through and you got to remain broken. You got to stay. God, I want to stay connected. God, I want to stay connected. God, I want to stay connected. All heads are bowed. God, I pray for a connected church. I pray for a church that's willing to step out on faith, God, in you and say, I want to I wanna remain in your presence, even if I got to do the hard things. I still want your presence. I love you too much. I reverence you too much. Don't let me serve you and I not have your spirit. spirit away from me. God, I want your oil. I want the anointing of God to do the work. Which means, God, I need your presence. I want to set my mind on the things of the spirit, not of the things of the flesh. I want to make sure that I'm watching out for every last relationship that I have so that I look and see them in their eternal future. God, we thank you. We honor you. If there's somebody in here that you're not saved, you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, I tell you today, get saved today. You had a good place. You're going to learn this. You're going to learn how to grow in this, man. Separating the things that are spirit, separating the things that, watch this, that will mean nothing. It might be valuable down here, but does it mean anything to God up there? And for the unsaved, I'm sorry to tell you, really heaven is the earth for you. But those who are saved, we got another home. 
this, this, is, this is okay. But there's something more amazing when we get up out of here. You make a decision today. Do you want to go where we headed? You want to be saved. It's your decision today. Those who are watching me online, make a decision today. We love you. We want you to come with us. We want you to continue to follow as we're learning how to do this thing. Just walk this life. Come on and join with us. Is there anybody in here? Everybody's praying. Is there anybody in here that you're not saved? If there's anybody in here, watch this. You don't have a church home and you say, Pastor Miles, I want to get connected. I want to, I want to, I want to get up under uh, um, a covering. I want to make sure that, watch this, I'm at a place where I can learn, I can grow, I can be a part, I can share my gifts. If that's you in here, everybody's praying. This is what this is about. If you're in here and you're asking God, should you connect? We're praying right now for your connection. Is there one? Everybody's fine. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. Listen, we're getting up out of here. Those who are watching us via online, we ask that you, uh, we're getting ready to give our offering and tithe. We're asking you, if you're online, please, uh, if you can cash app us, money sign, love, P-H-C-C. Money sign, love, P-H-C-C. I'm going to say it one more time. Money sign, love, P-H-C-C. You can give via Cash App. You also can give via Tithely as well. Um, somebody can post it up on the uh, comments. We say thank you so much. As a matter of fact, even if you want to mail in your checks, mail in your offering or tithe, you can definitely do that. Bring that to the church. We will welcome that as well. We want to say thank you for joining us on today. You could have been anywhere else but you decided to stop by Pine Hills Community Church uh, via Facebook. If you're not doing anything, check us out on Word on Wednesdays um, at our Bible study. We got something new going on, um, so we want you to join us. We say thank you so much. We love you. We appreciate you. Till next time, shalom. Amen.